Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today I wanted to give you guys some tips for RVing in negative temps. Say that 10 times fast. We had set our minds to leave, face the world on wheels. Okay guys. So we actually are in Pennsylvania this winter and I think this is where we're going to stay. Fingers crossed we don't end up somewhere like North Dakota. I just wanted to give you guys this, these tips for anybody who is going to be in negative temps for an extended period of time because there's some different things that we do that we're not doing this year that I thought might be helpful. <laughs> So I actually am not going to be able to show you these, but they're things we've done in the past. And so I just wanted to make this quick video and explain them to you guys. The first one, if you're in negative tips, you need skirting. So you can do this. My suggestion is one of two ways, actual skirting, which I'm going to do a video on my suggestions on purchasing skirting and what I would look for. If I've done that already, I will link it below, but if not, look out for that in the future. The other way is to use the insulated foam board that you can get at Lowe's and to basically cut it and lodge it between the ground and the bottom of your RV. So I don't really suggest straw. I don't know, it just, it worries me fire hazard wise, which is probably silly, but this other looks better and you could potentially reuse it so you're maybe not going to waste your money and i just think it works really well and a lot of campgrounds don't allow straw anyways so i would do that also another thing i've seen people do like makeshifty is the bubble wrap that people put in their windows the insulated bubble wrap looking stuff and that just really isn't practical you're probably going to waste your money and your time because it's going to blow in the wind and it's just not quite thick enough so temporarily it works to cut the wind if you can get it you know nailed down but if not it's just I don't know it's kind of a waste of money we've tried to do that before and it just doesn't work so skirting or foam insulation boards is my suggestion number two is a heated water hose you gotta have it can't live without it so I've done a video on how we did our DIY heated water hose that's a little bit cheaper than the ones you can purchase I will try to link that here wait is that right here I don't know <laughs> anyway I don't know man I think it's here I will link that down below as well as the blog post that it explains it as well you need a heated water hose you also along with that need to make sure the hydrant is heated and covered and you just have your bases covered with your water if your water isn't inside the heated under compartment you might want to put a lamp in there um, if it gets really really cold we haven't had to do that in a past we haven't had problems with it but some people do so just make sure you have the cage around it and it is safe you know fire hazard wise and there's normally a plug in that bay where your water goes in but if you're going to be in the winter if you think at all you're going to be in a camper make sure you get your water hookups that are enclosed even if they're not in the heated underbelly part that are enclosed the camping what i call camping type campers where the water the city water connection is right on the outside you're probably going to have a lot of troubles with that, especially in negative degree weather. So it might be better to run off of your fresh water tank because, yeah, you're just going to have problems, especially right there where it connects to the camper. So it can be done, but you might be out there with a hair dryer every now and again trying to thaw it out. I just wanted to interrupt really quickly and say that I forgot to mention one of my favorite little tricks. If you think you're setting up to stay for the winter, Whenever it starts to get colder, one thing I always like to look out for is how we can position our slides over the hookups if possible or very, very close. Because we have skirting, if we can get our slides over the water or over the sewer or maybe both, this is going to allow us to keep all of those things underneath and just add extra protection to those. So if you're in negative degree temps, that is a really, really good trick to try. So heat lamp 
for underneath the camper. Again, make sure you have the cage around it and that it is safe. We do not want any type of fire hazard at all. These things um, burn down in minutes and it's really scary and that's my biggest fear in the winter especially and so just please 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 make sure you're careful. We haven't had to do this but some people have had to and it works for them. Some people have also used heaters underneath their um, camper like skirting and if you do that, please just make sure you get one that turns off whenever it tips over. That's my suggestion on that. Now you need, for inside, you're probably going to need a heater. Uh, electric heater or a radiator heater. We have an electric heater. We actually run it almost all winter long down here in the living room area. Our living room and kitchen is very open. And so we have a really hard time regulating the temperature between down here and in the bedroom. The bedroom will be like on fire, toasting hot, and it will be cold down here. We run that heater down here as a way to kind of help us regulate the heat. I actually prefer heating the camper with propane. A lot of people, for some reason, steer clear of propane. And maybe you guys can tell me in the comments below. I don't really know why that is. I don't know if it's because they think it's more expensive or if it's because it's hard to find to fill up or why that is but honestly <laughs> what I figured out is it's not more expensive sometimes it's a lot more efficient I think it's um, supposed to be more efficient anyways and it keeps all your underbelly heated which helps with the heat of the floors so I don't know I just really 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 suggest using your propane heater. What I don't suggest, if you're paying your electric bill, which a lot of times in the winter you will be, especially if you're set up monthly like we always are, you're not going to want to use, or at least I wouldn't suggest it. I don't know. Try it out if you're willing to try it out. But the little, pr or the little electrical heater that comes with the camper, the fireplace, you know, it's cute. It's like, so, I don't know. I love looking at it. But that sucker, holy guacamole. The first winter that we had this camper, we, the first month that it got cold, we used that sucker all the time. Our electrical bill was $225 and I fell out. Like, blew my mind. I was freaking out. Everybody's electrical bill was like $175, $150. And ours was like double. And so as soon as we quit using that, the next month, our electrical bill was down to average. And so I have reason to believe that that's exactly what it was. I've heard other people say that. I've heard other people say that they run theirs and it doesn't run their bill up, but ours does. So just beware, 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 because I don't want you wasting your money. Now, the other thing that's huge in the winter, if you're going to be in the winter for a long period of time, and if you're in negative temperatures, you're going to blow through propane. You just are. You're going to blow through electricity. You're going to blow through propane. Um, these things aren't made to be um, kept warm in negative temperatures. They can be. It 100% can happen. But they're just, no matter how good your insulation is, you're still going to need a lot of heat. So I would suggest at a minimum 100 pound propane bottle, which a 100 pound propane bottle is the kind of taller, skinnier one. It's like, I don't know, not as quite as tall as me. Um, we always run with one of those because we set up monthly and it's just super handy to not have to fill up propane all the time. In the winter, we also like running with two of them uh, for two reasons. One is, one is always full. <laughs> The other one is um, like whenever we were gone for Christmas, I will link that video up here. We had two hooked up and so we were able to run heat while we were gone for two whole weeks and our camper stayed at 55 degrees and nothing inside froze and it was magical. So a hundred pound propane bottle. Now, if you know you're gonna be somewhere all winter long, if you're set up to stay, 
I would actually suggest a 100 gallon propane bottle. This is the size that's a little bit bigger round, quite a bit bigger round, about the same height. And a local propane company will, um, you can rent them or buy them, and they will bring them out, they will set them up, they will put a gauge on it, and they will fill it up. And whenever it's around 20 to 30%, you call them, they come out and they fill it up, you pay your bill, you don't ever have to mess with it. So if you know you're gonna be somewhere, this is so, so nice and honestly, I think so worth it. Because whenever it gets really, really cold, especially negative temps like what we're talking about in this video, you're gonna be going through propane. So up in North Dakota, I was filling up propane I want to say every four days sometimes and that can get really monotonous. I actually can <laughs> muster the strength to get the 100 pound bottle in and out of the vehicle by myself but most people can't especially women like a lot of them just have a really hard time and so it comes becomes very difficult to like get your propane filled and campgrounds don't always have a place to fill them and so anyways that's just my suggestion okay and then a dehumidifier this is really great tips for any winter RVing but a dehumidifier is a must you're gonna start getting frosty bits like around your door whenever you shut your curtains at night they're gonna frost up moisture is you don't want it you don't want to mess with it you don't want to mess with the mold so I actually I don't use blankets over my windows although I might suggest it if you're in negative temperatures you can find videos that talk about that all over YouTube be careful take those things off during the day and let the heat of the day especially whenever the Sun is out help you warm up and dry out so if I leave my blinds down and I have our like stock whatever blinds pleated blinds I hate them but I leave them in here for kind of to keep the to keep the warm in and the cold out in the winter time if I leave those down all day my all of my blind or I don't know like window seals are frosty and wet and if you stay in cold climates all winter long for a long winter that's going to cause you problems in the long run and you don't want to mess with that so open stuff out get your dehumidifier out run that sucker all day long and just keep the moisture out of your rv you will thank yourself RVing in the winter is probably, I don't really know this, but I'm guessing it's probably the worst thing you can do for your rig. It's very, very hard on them. So just do, take your precautions and make sure that you're just doing the best that you can to take care of your RV. Okay, and then on the inside of your RV, you also want to like things like rugs and you're probably gonna need house shoes and even heated blankets can make it really nice. These things can, like ours stays as warm as we want it and it can be toasty in here and cozy and homey, but those things just kind of help. We have carpet in our slides and since we have skirting, we don't deal with any type of draftiness whatsoever. A lot of people talk about that. If you have the right type of skirting and you have carpets in your slides where the slides, you know, transition into the floor, you're not going to deal with that, or at least we don't. And we don't have, I mean, we have an open range. They, it has a, you know, winter package, but it's not the greatest. That's why I really suggest the skirting if you need to put down some rugs, you know, to help keep your floor warm. Ours has the laminate floor, so we have a rug here in the living room, and it has really helped. Austin likes it in the winter. Okay, I think that is it. Like I said, these can really be used for any type of winter RVing, but especially if you're in negative temps, I, I mean, at a minimum, you need to be doing all of these things, and you're going to be so much happier. So I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up share it with your friends if you think it was useful and give me leave me a comment leave me a comment down below i would love to talk to you guys what are your tips for negative temperatures winter camping whatever it may be i'm glad that people are willing to go in the cold with their rvs there's you know everybody wants to run from the cold and we might do that too sometimes we are in the cold because of work and it's just how it is but there's some beautiful things and fun things to do in the winter, winter sports, etc. So don't run from the cold in your RV. You can make it happen and it's not that big a deal. 
and I hope that these things were useful for whatever reason you're in the cold. So, all right. Like I said, leave me a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you to hang out with us more. And we will see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Take a swim in salty water, drink and start.